Today, we have an artist at public speaking, a certified trained speech judge. He has chartered 18 international clubs through Toastmasters International, where speaking skills, leadership skills, and human relationships are learned and taught. Please welcome Tyree Johnson. Hello, Tyree. Thank you, Rebecca. We're glad to have you with us today. Tell us how you got started in Toastmasters. Well, Rebecca, it's an interesting story. I got started because at the original job that I had, I was responsible for building and developing financial systems. But what I soon came to realize was that the users of this system had to be trained in how to do it properly. So as much time that went into developing it, I also realized that people needed to be able to use it properly. So while I gave a few seminars on it, I came to also see that my communication skills had to increase. Therefore, someone suggested to me go into Toastmasters, and I did initially, and I didn't realize what all the program had to offer. So I went to one meeting and dropped out. But two years later, I saw that I really needed to concentrate on developing my communication skills, and I got started there back in March of 2001, and I was off and running after that. Well, I know a lot of people just don't realize how important communication skills are. They really affect every aspect of our lives, don't they? Yes, indeed. I really believe that part of being successful is realizing whatever you do, you are in a people business. No man can be, or woman, can be an island unto themselves. So process and profits mean a lot, but relationships are, are the utmost importance. And in order for you to further any relationship that you want to have ongoing, regardless of your product, process or, or products, to gain a profit, you have to keep those relationships intact. And communication skills and leadership skills are paramount to making sure that that happens properly. Some authors claim that communication skills done correctly can change a person's life as much as 80% all the way around. Private relationships, business relationships, money, the whole thing. What do you think about that? I, I totally agree. In fact, I gave a speech earlier today about com speaking with conviction. And the point really being made is, Despite any preparation you do with your public relations and marketing and plans to go forward, unless you have conviction in what you're going to present to any client or listener, that you won't get people to follow through on your actions. And that's what we really want to do when we communicate with people properly, to make sure you are in tune to a customer or audience member's needs, to know what they're looking for out of that conversation, out of that presentation, and that you are going to follow through on your words, but they're going to be inspired and enticed by the way you present your, your particular message. Yeah, if you don't present yourself with conviction, how can they believe in you? They can't, can they? Exactly. I mean, there's so many choices for people to make that unless you come across as authoritative and a person of credibility, they'll look elsewhere for that, for those sources. You've done a great deal of work with Toastmasters all over, but especially in the Bay Area. What are some of your pre favorite projects? One of my favorite projects is to actually build new clubs. I think that that process of building a new club within Toastmasters 
mirrors the sales process that anyone would do in a business. And that is to convince 20 or so non-Toastmasters to want to join in a club that has yet to be formed and meet at a particular time, pay the dues, and move forward to meet on a regular basis. It's kind of like just starting a business from scratch. And I know that the persuasive skills that it takes, as well as the persistence to keep people on track, is a little like herding cats and putting them in formation so that from here on out, they see the need to increase their leadership and communication skills and they're willing to invest both their time and a little bit of money that we ask for to do it on a regular basis. From there, that once they actually start a club, they're going to meet on a regular basis. And that meeting is not just a quality meeting, but it's a meeting that meets the needs of each and every member there until they feel they have no more use and then you start that whole process over again. So anybody who moves on for whatever reasons, they get a new job, they feel like they met their level of competence, or they just have other things in life that happen, you have to continue marketing to people who don't have those skills and have those needs and bring them into the club and process. Would you explain to our listening audience exactly what Toastmasters clubs do? Toastmasters clubs do two things at the same time. They give each and every person an opportunity to increase both their speaking and listening skills as well as implement different areas of leadership. By that I mean we have three segments of a meeting, and each club will follow this general structure but they can put different twists on it. Everyone gets a chance to give a prepared speech. Usually you'll hear two to three, depending on the time, length the time of a meeting. And those speeches are five to seven minutes. And you're given a guidebook, we call them manuals, that don't tell you what to talk about, but do give you tips on how to deliver your message, whether it's working on vocal variety, your body gestures, researching a topic, inspiration, whatever those are. Second phase is what we call table topics. This really helps people practice impromptu speaking. If you have a job interview, if you're doing something like you are as a host of a show, if you are a, someone in business or a politician, you need to be able to get offer people insightful, meaningful information in a short amount of time. You don't have all day to get your message across. And you do that effectively in one to two minutes. And that's what Table Topics helps you to do. You don't know what the, pro what the question or subject may be ahead of time. And we try not to make it, you know, complicated like understanding what's the meaning of life. But something in which you can respond and really just practice an opening, beginning, and closing out your subject. I segue this to say that so often, as much as you hear people talk about being afraid to speak, probably what they're much more in danger is speaking too much. It's what I call diarrhea of the mouth. Don't get that visual, but you know what I'm saying. People just talk well past their selling point. The third area is, which I think is the true value of Toastmasters, and that's the evaluation section. The evaluation section comes in different segments. First and foremost, every prepared speaker has someone who will stand up and give them an oral evaluation of their view of the speech, things that they liked, things that they saw, some points of improvement. Everybody else in the listening audience will give you a written evaluation, so you don't have to just take that one person's word for it. But also you will get a report in terms of how well the, the meeting was run in terms of time. Every, every speech 
whether it's impromptu or prepared, gets time. Every speaker has someone specifically listening to their abuse of the English language in terms of filler words, um, ahs, you knows, as well as a grammarian who's going to listen to colorful phrases and terms that are really effective using metaphors, similes, allegories. And then we'll wrap all that up by saying that this meeting was well run on time in areas in, of improvement there. So someone will comment on the leadership based on what the Toastmaster did and all the other roles. That's a pretty good agenda. Public speaking is said to be a person's greatest fear. So when you say it's like herding cats, it's really hard to herd cats through their greatest fear. And I understand that. I also understand the great influence that you have had on people, Tyree, because of the influence you had on me. I am one of your many fans who have taken Toastmasters to another level because of people like you. And there are so many of us that you'll have no idea how many lives you've touched directly and indirectly through the people that you have taught and not only through public speaking, but through leadership skills as well. Today, our guest is Tyree Johnson, a highly rewarded and awarded public speaker. Tyree, what's the hardest thing that you had to do in learning public speaking? I believe the, the most difficult area for me was realizing that my conclusion of my statement needed as much energy as my opening. When I came to realize that it's connecting with an audience is what's most important as much as crafting my message, then I got a whole new understanding of public speaking and communication. Too often, and I hear this from others, and I know I was guilty of it too, was I was so nervous. I I would memorize my opening line, maybe a joke, and know all my material. But then as I got close to, to the end as a summary, I just felt like all the air was lit out of a balloon. And I would just say, in summary, this is all I have to say, and the, your best color is red. And I re came to realize that people really want to be led as an audience member. So they want to hear your energy throughout, and they want to know, that the time they spent listening to you was worthwhile and that I at least gave them something to that was provocative enough for them to respond to and hopefully act on that I made as a call to action. And I did that in a way that I didn't have to jump on top of a, of a rooftop and shout or anything, but it was, it was intriguing and captivating enough so they knew I meant business. And I believed in it, and I wanted them to believe as well.